Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. In this video, let us discuss about transmission electron microscopy. Come kind to the principle. It is a technique in which a beam of electrons is transmitted through specimen to form an image. The specimen is ultra thin, which is less than 100 nanometers. An image is formed from the interactions of the electrons with the sample as beam is transmitted through the specimen. You know, and here one of the important thing which you have to remember is the specimen which you which you will place in this uh, base plate of the electron microscopy should be ultra thin. I mean, it should be less than 100 nanometers. Okay, so you have to you have to check the you have to check that uh, size and then only you have to place it on the sample. Uh, you know, sample applicator. So next, uh, this transmission electron microscopy was firstly discovered by Max Noll and Ernst Traska in 1931. And Ernst Traska uh, put a lot of efforts on this discovery of the transmission electron microscope. So he, the, so only Ernst Traska was awarded with Nobel Prize in 1986. So now let us see the mechanism how the you know transmission electron microscopy will work. So normally, uh, you know, in the scanning electron microscopy and transmission electron microscopy, uh, electron source is used, but not, uh, you know, light source is not used. Light source is nothing but the emission of photons, and we know that electricity is nothing but the emission of electrons. So that emission of the electrons will be takes place by this electron gun, where you see in the case of scanning electron microscopy here, electron source is nothing but releasing of electrons uh, where electron source plays a major role in acting as electron gun and that electron gun this is called as electron gun and that electron gun will release as electrons and that uh, you know electron beam will pass upon the anode we know that this anode is like a dislike structure in such a way that the surrounding region will be closed so that closed region will stop the flow of the electrons so the open region which is in the middle region will allow to pass it on the another uh, you know another part of the electron microscope so here another part is nothing but the condenser condenser aperture so this condenser aperture uh, will condense the uh, you know will condenses the flow of electrons i mean condense in the within the name itself it indicates that condenser is nothing but condense condensing is nothing but you know uh, you know con con condensing it to a single point so it will keep condensed to a single point in such a way that it will be passed from it will passed into the stem scan coil and finally it reaches up to the base plate so we know that base plate consists of specimen which we take i mean the sample which we'll take and this sample uh, it will be you know through this uh, x-ray detector will be detected by this image and next and this specimen now the light will be passed up to the objective lens and from the objective lens it passes to the objective aperture and this and also selected area aperture will also be present in this type of microscope in such a way that only the particular type of image which we want i mean the remaining restricted image will be removed out and the particular image which we wanted to have from this you know from this sample will be detected by the selected area aperture in such a way that uh, you know that type of beam will be passed to the projector lens so here projector lens plays a major role in such a way that the type of uh, you know the type of the imaging formation takes place in this uh, you know projector lenses but it will not display it helps in the display but it, do it doesn't display it helps in the display so the spreader lens will helps in the display of the type of image which has been formed from this sample and next this projector plays a major role in projecting the image and that image will be projected in the viewing screen so before so before viewing this uh, type of image normally amplification and modulation process takes place amplification is nothing but the you, you know it occurs by the amplifier and modulation occurs by the modulator and amplification is nothing but the increasing the power of signals modulation is nothing but uh, you know transmitting the type of the uh, signal which has been received so here received is nothing but the sample right so from the sample only the signals has been received i mean the image signals has been received so this uh, by the modulation and by the amplification process the image will be viewed upon the screen and here ccd camera has been used here so CCD CCD camera plays a major role in such a way that it helps in the recording. If, for example, if you take a sample with a live bacterium, I mean, which is which is which is survival, which is which has a capacity to survival, then if you place that live bacterium upon this base plate as a sample, then this CCD camera will. Uh, record the type of the movement and um, for example if you take a uh, sperms and if you place a uh, sperm upon this sample i mean as a sample in the base plate then what happens is that uh, you know we know that the sample uh, you know the sperms has a capacity to migrate and that migration you can see with the help of the ccd camera because it, it get recorded right so if you want to see you can be seen in the viewing screen but if you want to get recorded it you can use ccd camera okay and normally this ampli uh, by the process of this amplification and modulation bf image and df image has been formed so bf image is nothing but bright field image and df image is nothing but the dark field image both of the images can be formed by this 
uh, you know amplification and modulation process so this is about the transmission electron microscopy so again i'm going to say it clearly in a short way so electron source will be used here the what is the main function of electron source production of electron electron electrons so electrons is nothing but electron gun and that electron gun will release us electrons and that electrons uh, you know that electron beam will fall upon the anode we know that the anode is in a disk like structure where the surrounding region stops that electron beam and the open region will helps in the passing that electrons where the electrons which has been passed from the anode will fall upon the condenser aperture then immediately what happens is that the condenser you know the condenser helps in the condensing the condensing the uh, you know beam of the electrons then it passes upon the base plate we, we know that the base plate consists of sample which we take and now this uh, electrons which consists of the sample uh, you know will passed upon the objective lens and this objective lens which consists of this rays will uh, you know you know what we say that electron beam will passes upon the objective aperture selected area aperture and projector lenses where this projector lens will project the type of the imaging but it, it doesn't exhibit the image but it helps in the production of the image so that projector is nothing but you know the projector right it helps in the it helps in the viewing the image so the projector lenses will project the image and it helps in the viewing of the screen you know it helps in the view it in a screen and in this screen we can find the image particular type of image and before entering into the you know view, before uh, before entering into the screen it undergoes amplification and modulation process we know that amplification is nothing but increasing the power of the signals modulation is nothing but it helps in the transmission of the signals which it receive so if we receiving is nothing but the type of the you know that type of the signals which has been received from the type of the sample it depends upon the type of the sample which you place upon this base plate and next here uh, it plays and here bf and adf data will be placed bf is nothing but bf is nothing but bright field detector and adf detectors is nothing but angular dark field detector so here these two detectors plays a major role in such a way that it helps in the formation of bf image bright field image and dark field image bright field image will be formed by the bright field detectors and dark field image will be formed by the angular dark field detector and finally it places upon a screen so that it will be visible for our naked eye and next ccd cameras are mainly used here so ccd cameras is nothing but which plays a major role recording the type of the uh, signals which it receive so this is about the transmission electron microscopy so in my channel we completely discuss about bright field microscope next dark field microscope and next phase contrast microscope and next fluorescence microscope and next scanning electron microscope and next transmission electron microscope so these are the type of electron microscopy which was explained in my channel and each of the link will be given in the description box of each of the video so if you like these videos i have created a playlist in my channel so uh, the playlist the name of the playlist is microscopy so if you open that playlist then you can find all of these videos